All right, we have two more types of factoring to review today. So the first type that we're going to review, which is actually the third in our overall review, is the greatest common factor, which we often call GCF. And the examples we're going to do are just going to be um, the greatest common factor with some binomials. So we're going to do this first. And greatest common factor um, as a factoring method can be in binomials and trinomials. Um, and you'll see it in all sorts of different type of problems. Um, but we're just going to look at some binomials today. And then I'll show you guys some problems where we can see it in some other um, situations where you might factor out a GCF first and then do difference of squares or do the GCF first and then look at a trinomial. Um, but for today, we're just going to look at just GCF and that's it. So if you look at the first two terms here, we can see that the first term, 3x, and the second term, 18, both of those are divisible by 3. So that means that the GCF is 3. And for the first term, if you have a 3x and you take out the 3, that leaves an x behind. And for the second term, if you have an 18 and you divide by 3, that leaves a 6 behind. So GCF of 3, the leftovers are x plus 6. Next, if we have 18x squared plus 24x, with this one, I'm going to look at the numbers 18 and 24, and I'm going to think about what number I could divide out of both of them. So I might notice that both of them are divisible by 2, both of them are divisible by 3, uh, both of them are divisible by 6. And because it's a GCF, the greatest common factor, I want to take out the biggest thing. So I don't want to take out 2 or 3. I want to take out 6 because that's the biggest number. And then between the variables, I also have something in common. I have an x. So I'm going to go ahead and take the x out as well. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. x squared divided by x is just x. Um, so that's the leftovers for the first term. 6x multiplied by 3x is 18x squared. And then over here, 24 divided by 6 is 4. And I had an x, and I took it out, so there's no x left over. And I can double check. 6x multiplied by 4 is 24x. So the GCF was 6x, and the leftovers were 3x plus 4. Um, here's another example, 4m squared minus 20m. So between the numbers 4 and 20, the GCF would be 4 because 4 can divide out of both of those. 2 is also a common factor, but it's not the biggest one. So the biggest number that can divide out of both of those is 4. So I'm going to take out the GCF of 4. And then between the variables m squared and m, we're going to take out a GCF of m. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. So you can write a 1 there, or you could just write nothing there, because we don't have to write the 1 down unless it's the only thing. Um, m squared divided by m would just be m. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And then m divided by m, we don't even have to write it because it's gone. And so the GCF was 4m. The leftovers were m minus 5. So that one is finished. OK, let's try one last problem. All right, so this one I'm doing something tricky on purpose because this happens a lot and students um, get these problems wrong. So there's no number in common between these, or there is, but it's just a one. Um, and so there's no number for us to take out. But if you look at the letter, if you look at the variable, we have an m squared and we have an m. And so in common, we're going to say that there's an m. That's what the GCF is. So for the first term, we have m squared divided by m. 
It leaves an M behind. And for the last term, we would say, okay, there was an M here, but we took it out. And so some students say, okay, we don't have to leave anything behind, so I'm just going to end my parentheses. But then that's confusing because you have M minus what? So any time you had something at the end and you took out exactly that something, you have to leave a 1 basically as a placeholder. M divided by M is 1. So you always have to put a 1 there if the number is exactly the same or if the letter is exactly the same. So we need to make sure that if you were to take this and distribute it back inside, it would equal the original problem. M multiplied by M is M squared. M multiplied by negative 1 is negative M. So the GCF is M. The leftovers are M minus 1. Okay, so the next type of problem is a trinomial. So just like what we learned first, but this is where the A does not equal 1. So these are going to be slightly different. So for example, we're going to do the problem 5x squared minus 12x plus 7. So when I say the A value doesn't equal 1, I'm talking about quadratics because they're in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. So what I'm saying here is that there's a number right here in front of X squared. And what we did the first day is we looked at problems where the X squared was all alone, which means that the A value is 1. What we're going to look at today is problems where the X squared is not alone. We're going to look at problems where the X squared has a coefficient. And so these problems are going to be a little bit more difficult. So the process that I like to do for these um, is called slide divide bottoms up. And some teachers teach the box method and some teachers teach guess and check. Um, I don't know if there's any other methods that I've heard of, but from my experience, students really like slide divide bottoms up, so that's what I'm going to teach. And if you don't like it, just let me know and I can do another method with you. So the method is slide, divide, bottoms up. So first step is to slide. So what we do is we take the number in the front, we slide it over to the number on the end. So I did that first step. So 5 multiplied by 7 is 35. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 35 but add to negative 12. And so this is just like what we did on that first day of factoring where we would take the problem and we'd say, okay, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 35 but add to negative 12. And the two numbers that do that would be negative 5 and negative 7. So I used my little calculator trick to figure it out. And so I'll go ahead and put those in my parentheses, but I'm not done because I have two more steps left. I have to do divide and bottoms up. So the first step was sliding the 5 over to the 7 and multiplying it. So I have to undo that. I have to undo that multiplication, and I do that by dividing. So I slid the 5, so now I'm going to divide by 5. Okay, I just did the divide step. And so now with these two fractions, I'm going to simplify them if I can. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 7 over 5 is not, it doesn't divide to a whole number, and that fraction does not reduce. And so if that is the case, then you move the bottom up to the front. So 5 moves right in front of the x. 5x minus 7. And then that problem is done. So the three steps are slide, divide, bottoms up. Okay, let's try another one. So with this one, we'll do, sorry, my lead broke. Let's do 6v squared plus 11v minus 10. 
So again, we're going to do slide, divide, bottoms up. Okay. So the first step is to slide the 6 over to the negative 10. So 6 multiplied by negative 10 is negative 60. And then I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 60 but add to 11. So negative 60 divided by x. Those are all my options. So multiply to 60 but add to positive 11. So that'd be negative 4 and 15. So v minus 4, v plus 15. Next, I'm going to take the number I slid, which was a 6, and I'm going to divide by 6 and divide by 6. And then I have to reduce each of those fractions. So 4 over 6, both of those are divisible by 2. So I'm going to say divide by 2, I get 2. Divide by 2, I get 3. These are both divisible by 3. So divide by 3, I get 5. Divide by 3, I get 2. And then once I have reduced those fractions, then I take the bottom and move it up to the front. So 3v minus 2, 2v plus 5. Okay, and I'll just leave it at two examples for that problem, and we can go ahead and do more examples in class.